May I have the roll call, please? Yes, yeah, ma'am. Um, I'm going to call your name. If you hear your name, please say present. Um, President Tracy King. Present. Vice President Jane Benares. Present. Myself, Secretary Jackie Sutton. Treasurer Leslie Andame. Present. May, uh, Masi Mejia. Mejia, I'm sorry. Present. Myra Hernandez. And Kenny Duncan. Here. Present. I have six present and just one missing, and that's Miss Myra Hernandez. Okay. Uh, we move on to the approval of the minutes. Um, uh, Madam Chair, motion to approve the minutes of the first meeting. Second. Okay, is there a discussion? Well, I just noticed, um, Madam Chair, that on B on the first page, there's no second there. Is there a, does that need to have a second there? For rich, um, Section B, Review of Updated Ordinance Governing Committee Boards and Commissions Meeting Frequency. Moved by Jean Ben Maris, and there's no second. But there was a second. Yeah, but it's just sure. not typed there. Is that fine? Is it a typo, maybe? No, I think um, it was. I was. I was looking at the. I was transcribing the entire um, meeting, and I didn't. I didn't hear anybody uh, motion like second the motion. Um, but I think Mr. Chair had said that it was. It was fine. Okay. Just curious if, that, if it's just. Missing a second, if that's oh, going to be. But there was fun. a second. I'm almost certain that because we had a discussion. Mm -hmm. Let me look at my notes real quick. My handwritten. Notes. I think it's that one. Yeah, I had. I was listening to the YouTube and over and over, again, <laughs> but I didn't hear. A, I didn't hear a second. And it was just really the, the banner was between the three of us here, so mm -hmm. it more than likely. Unless I did and I didn't see it. Mm -hmm. yeah. We didn't work that enough. If you want, if you recall that it was Jackie, we can fill that in right now. I, I, I second everything. Just verbally make that change to the minutes before you make your final approval. Yes, yeah, so I do second that motion of a meeting frequency. Okay. Cool. So as amended. All right. So then the motion to approve the minutes from the meeting June 30th. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Hearing no objections, the motion passes unanimously. Um, citizen communication is next. Are there any visitors or citizens wishing to make any comment at this time? We do have a visitor, Madam Chair, that I'd like, if, if we could acknowledge, <laughs> which is Mr. Austin. Hi, Mr. Austin. <laughs> and some of you know him, but I'll let him introduce himself. Good afternoon, thank you all for the invitation. My name is Tony Artson, the manager of external affairs for AAP Texas Student Electric Utility. Uh, also serve on different community projects most recently. Well, actually, for the last three years, I've been a board member for Keep Texas Beautiful, mm -hmm. uh, the state board that works with the affiliates that keep the greater beautiful. And I've been to some conferences pre COVID, but bless you, right. that, that's yes. a really good uh, education forum. So, yes. uh, currently, the vice president. And we have our board meeting, our annual board meeting, later this month, and scheduled to be uh, nominated to be the president of the organization. So hopefully, uh, as I go through, I look forward to working with, with this group. Uh, I've been working just like the rest of you all, and so anything that we can do to enhance what this organ, what this group is doing, I look forward to working with you all. Thank you. Appreciate that. Congrats. Congrats. Congratulations. Yes, we're very excited for you. Maybe we could do a photo up before we break and um, take a picture sure. all together before we do today. So, all right, very good. Thank you. I do not know of any other um, citizen communications at this time, Madam Chair. So then we move on to the discussion with possible action on the updated bylaws governing the Keep Your Beautiful Board and all matters incident there too. So this is what we uh, updated last meeting. Correct. Some amendments that we made to the bylaws. Would I just uh, do a motion to approve the changes, or do, do you want to go over them? 
Madam, Madam President, I think that would be good if we could just walk us discuss some of the other board members are working better, just the things that we kind of felt needed addressing. I think they, they highlighted most of them in red. Mm -hmm. and did some uh, strike throughs, mm -hmm. but the, the key issues were the meetings and notices thereof, uh, you know, what constituted a quorum. I think that was a big issue that we wanted to resolve. And then, obviously, they've added the issue of removal. Yes. Even though that wasn't really one of our questions, we kind of knew what that was. We just needed to line it up with the protocol procedures. Correct. Protocol procedures as well as an ordinance that right, took effect. Right. Um, in 2019, I believe, is what that ordinance states to, or 2018. Um, and the bylaws had not been um, effectively looked at or updated since about 2008, from what I've been able to find in the archives of the organization. Mm -hmm. And so it was just basically an, um, an opportunity for the board to come together and look at what governs you, and then also look at what governs other boards, committees, and commissions, and bring the two into alignment as well as just generally update. So we did make a few small word changes where it read directors as opposed to board. We tried to make it all read board, small things like that. And then our city attorney also, our assistant a city attorney looked at it as well. And she made some slight changes to the document too. Everything is in red um, as, um, Member Benmaris pointed out that's been uh, updated, and those that language is actually very specifically taken from the ordinance that we were looking at to um, bring into this uh, document. And then the other thing I want to mention in my discussions with the assistant city attorney was to follow up on part of the discussion from the last meeting. Um, where I believe it was our president that had made the point that the commission or the, the board wasn't able to meet during the time frame of COVID where we had some meeting restrictions that were in place as per management. And her suggestion, it's Ana Sofia Garcia that oversees our department in this division. Um, she suggested that we could make a one-time change to apply um, perhaps lengthening the term of service mm -hmm. for the current sitting board members so that you can sort of give yourself that time back, if that makes sense, the time you lost from COVID and not being able to meet. She said you could, you could move to make a one-time change to the bylaws, taking into consideration COVID restrictions that were in place that kept you from meeting and kept you from being able to be an active board. Because Does that not, make sense? Yes, okay. if not, we would have to, uh, April would be two years, right? Correct, yes. April 2022. Correct, yes. And then um, clarification on your timeline. Each timeline begins, your appointment begins upon the day of your oath. Right. We also clarified that. So Ms. Sutton, on her um, attendance sheet, I went ahead and put in a column there on the dates of whose appointment uh, took effect. So each of you have a little bit of a different timeline based on the day that you took that oath. Mm -hmm. um, but most, every, I mean, everyone with the exception of Mr. Duncan, who just took his oath today, is is um, <laughs> May or June of 2020. Mm -hmm. So you actually have a little bit beyond that April timeline, just to be very specific yes. to the question you just asked about, okay. is it April 2020 or what is that date? Mm -hmm. That date would correspond to the date of your oath. Okay. So for instance, your May 15th, I remember that because that's Laredo's founding day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you're, you would be May 15th okay. of 2022. Okay. That would technically be when your term expires. Um, so that's the answer to that question. And then to resolve that, our assistant city attorney made the suggestion that the board could move to, it, to um, expand the timeline because of COVID time lost. If that, I hope that makes sense. Yes, it does. We should have had more coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a length of time that they allowed to expand to that? It's up to the commission. 
your your bylaws govern govern you, and you can make adjustments to those bylaws as you see uh, necessary and appropriate. We'd like to call that move today. No. You can consider it today and discuss it today, and we could add the item to the next agenda, or we, if you want staff to do some research on timeline for you. Are we you, still missing some appointees? Not necessarily. I, I do believe, it because we have not heard back from Ida Yeras and from Viane uh, Ramirez, thank you, Ms. Lucy, I believe that they are going to be uh, forfeiting because they haven't been responsive. So upon their fourth absence, based on the changes being approved in the bylaws, we can, you know, they forfeit their positions and then we can go out and, well, it doesn't keep us from being able to recruit other board members, but I believe we're going to lose two of the current appointees okay. to answer that question. Okay. So then, um, Madam President, I would probably would like to y'all for y'all to bring it back as a staff as a, as an item for discussion okay. Okay. and extending the term and also officially removing those who have not uh, uh, been present at the last meetings. Okay. Okay, uh, I've got to do some research on that also. I guess from when it was shut down to when it was kind of reopened, I guess to see whether the six month period, seven month period, whatever that time okay. frame was. Yes, we do have a, a, mem a memo from the city manager that should give us the time certain on the start. Um, and it's the end date that I'm not real well sure about, but we can research that. Thank you. So just to review, uh, bring back an item on the amendment for the timeline to member service or member term I should say term of service and then two the amount of time lost due to COVID correct yes, and then an item to officially remove the members that haven't been responsive sure. Motion that has to be no, that's, that's more of a staff no, it's, 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 it's a direction okay. to staff, and okay. so we'll, we'll work on that. Okay. But with regards to item five, with the, the adoption of the bylaws, there is an item here, Madam President, about the live stream of the of the meeting. Now, that's the past factor, or is that if, uh, if only if possible? Only if possible, yes. And that, again, that language comes from the ordinance, from the ordinance. itself. Okay. But there's no requirement to do so. Correct. Okay. So I was going to ask, say I can't make it for whatever reason, or anybody can't make it, can we request, hey, can somebody uh, live stream it so that I can be part of it? Or, I mean, how would that work? Is that... I did have an answer on that specific question from the city attorney's office, and I'll read it to you at this time, Madam Chair. Um, as per the governor's orders of September 1st, 2021, granted the Attorney General's request to suspend certain open meeting statutes. The temporary suspension allows, among other things, for telephonic or video conference meetings of governmental bodies that are accessible to the public in an effort to reduce in-person meetings that assemble large groups of people. I would suggest only in-person meetings from now on. You're welcome to include in the bylaws that video conference meetings can occur in the case of an emergency or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. So that would be perhaps another consideration for an addition to the bylaws that, but at this time they're asking for in-person meetings. Okay. So we can't do it like a, a Zoom or a Google Meet like to be part of it, it has to be in person. And when I discussed it further, my understanding was no, because I did, I did, Pose that in my question to the city attorney. Oh, okay. So, so it just requires 
att physical attendance unless there's an emergency. Uh, we could make that amendment to the bylaws is what it, it the thought that it ended with here. Okay. That in the event of another health related or public health emergency that video conferencing is an allowable format for the meetings. Excuse me, can we maybe um, add it to the next agenda as to consider what would be um, considered public health maybe when the city announces we are in a public health emergency, we're in a state of emergency. Is that what we consider emergency once the city publicly announces it? Instead I don't like going by numbers of hospitalization. If I understand you correctly, what I could do is ask for the city attorney for some language that mm -hmm. would be appropriate that would define what a public emergency mm -hmm. or a public health emergency is. Mm -hmm. And so I can I can get that for you and we can add that item to the next agenda as well. Yeah. Okay. So then I'll move that we table this this item uh, pending the additional language on the uh, uh, Virtual uh, the bylaws for the virtual meetings in the event of an emergency, mm -hmm. as defined by one of the city secretaries or city attorney's office. City attorney's office. Yes. That can also be if we were one of us were exposed or a family member, but we still want to be part of the meeting. We can still do that video conference. It doesn't have to be something that the city says it's an emergency. It's like if you have a family, like an emergency as well. Can that? Yes, yeah. yes, I think I think that several right. conditions could apply, and okay. you can you can add that into your just in case um, language for the bylaws. Okay. So you, you move to table section three, the entire uh, everything else on this. I'm just going to table it all for the for the interim so they get that language for the and we can adopt the everything the all. Right, I second that motion. Okay. Okay. So. Motion to table um, the bylaws. The bylaws. Right? Mm -hmm. The bylaws. Pending the additional language. Pending additional language. Is there any discussion? And can we, uh, you second it, right? Yes, All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Hearing no objections, the motion passes unanimously. Then we have discussion with possible action on the confirmation of treasurer position to be filled by Ms. Destiny Adame. to see what the position is, but I'll be more than happy to fulfill that. Okay. So then, then I move that we confirm uh, those in on this archive. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Hearing no objections, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Leslie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And honestly, <laughs> staff, staff will carry most of that work. I mean, we know what the budget is, we know what the expenses are, so we can start developing a financial report with, you know, with your review, and then we can start presenting that to the board. So since we're just kind of getting started with every, all of sort of the logistical parts of being a board. So, mm -hmm. so then the staff reports are next. Mm -hmm. My my report is in the packet. It should be the last page of the packet. Lucy and I have been working on several different things. Um, I will highlight the fact that um, we've been working with the Rio Grande International Study Center and Laredo Rotary, which is district wide, on a World River Day observant observance and a series of events which would happen towards the end of September. Um, right now, the Rotary has received the rights to air or um, run a screening of the story of plastic 
And The Story of Plastic was just recently nominated for an Emmy for um, their writing, an Emmy in writing. And so um, we're real excited about that. That would be hosted at Tammy U, and KLB would just really be a support piece to that, um, but obviously bringing attention to the issue of plastic. In our litter surveys that we've done, plastic comes up everywhere. Um, there isn't a survey that we haven't done where we haven't found several different types of plastics. Every photo that I've taken of litter and every photo that our stormwater crew has taken of litter that they've picked up, all kinds of plastics are there. They just sent me a photo from a clean cleanups that they did today and yesterday with, well, really today with all of the rain that came in last night or yesterday afternoon and last night, um, all kinds of plastics were washed into and clogging up the storm drains. Um, when you, when I saw the photos, I was like looking at, I was like, you know, blowing them up to look at what it was that was, you know, stopping up the, the storm drains and that had been caught um, and the things that they had to clean out by hand. And so plastic is everywhere in our community. It's definitely an issue for us. So I think the story of plastic mm -hmm. is very appropriate and we're very supportive of the fact that it'll bring some awareness to that particular issue. Not to mention we're a contributor to, unfortunately, to the marine plastic that's floating around in the Gulf of Mexico because we are upriver from uh, Brownsville and from the Gulf. So everything that our guys and our system doesn't catch gets washed out to the Gulf through the river. So we're very excited to be a part of that. Um, Tammy U is going to be the host institution. Laredo Rotary is the main host institution. Um, and then we hope to do sort of this one-two punch. We hope that that can be in September, um, looking at, I believe the third Thursday in September is actually World River Day. Um, and I wanna say, let me look at the calendar really quick so that I can tell you correctly what that. Yes, yeah, September 23rd, we believe. So we'd like to do the screening of the movie either that Thursday Friday, possibly pushing it in the next week, depending on what's happening at Tammy U and the venue availability there. But I'm working with Dr. Patricia Abrego, and she is working on that on that venue uh, um, reservation. And Tammy U was not; they were restricted up until this month, and their venues weren't available, so they just came available this month. So that's why I don't have more details for you because we're kind of waiting on this COVID timeline that they were operating under, and then now with COVID changing, I'm not sure how that's been impacted or not. And then on the 25th, I'm sorry, on the 26th, which is the Sunday after that, um, we're going to do what's called an audit cleanup um, along Las Palmas Trail um, down at the river. So Las Palmas, if you're not familiar with it, if you're looking at the pedestrian bridge, which is bridge number one, um, it's going to be to the east of that. So if you're looking at it to the left, that's why I'm kind of going like in my brain, I'm picturing <laughs> the, the bridge going this direction. Um, and that's been uh, named a nature preserve by the city council. So the city council just recently took action to create these preservation areas um, in, in the city, especially along the river. Um, and that trail is a very popular birding trail. Um, but it's also very popular with Border Patrol and unfortunately illegal um, immigration issues down there. Nonetheless, we're going to go give it some love. We want to clean it up. Uh, we want to maybe add some mulch and anything that we pull out of there, um, we are going to audit. So we're actually going to take the trash, dump it back out, and take a survey of what it is that we collected um, and see what it is that we're finding so that we can have some data behind the cleanup. Um, and obviously, RISC can use that, we can use that, Laredo Rotary can use that because they have grant programs um, that we're hoping to jointly all kind of tap into for our community for the benefit of, um, obviously, um, that area. Um, and bringing attention to the river as well and that particular nature trail, which I don't think gets a whole lot of, the birders know it really well, but I don't think the public knows it really well, and they don't know how to access it, they don't know how to get down there. 
Um, and it really is a beautiful place. Um, and it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. It has, I think Trisha was saying, an Eocene era rock formation where you can see all the layers of, you know, thousands and thousands of years of compression um, on one side of it. So it's, it's a really gorgeous place. And it ends up obviously at Sakata Creek. And then if you hike up from there um, into the city from Sakata, it's also a very beautiful hike. So um, we're hoping to clean the section between bridge number one and Sakata Creek. Um, and that's what we're gonna focus our efforts on um, and do the audit. And so, yeah, I wanna bring, I wanna bring some attention to that. And that would be my one highlight for my report, Madam Chair, if there's anything else that uh, the committee would like to discuss regarding my report, I'm happy to answer questions. So is it just the Laredo Rotary that's sponsoring the story of plastic, or is it like Rotary and It's district-wide, okay. and what's happening with the Rotary Clubs, I forgot to mention that part, so thank you for asking the question, Masi. It's a bi-national effort, so on the 26th, it's all of the Rotary Clubs along the Texas-Mexico border in Mexico and the U.S. that'll have a project that day. So we're 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 one. Ours is one component of this binational effort that's happening all along, um, with Rotary specific, Rotary International, all across Texas along the border. We'll have something going on at the river, or we'll have some sort of cleanup happening that day that impacts the river. They may not be right on the river, but they're going to be having something that impacts the river. Do you know if Rotary International has like at least here in Texas? partnered with like school districts since they're talking about plastic that's like a science teak to kind of I don't know the yeah. answer to that but I think I was interested I was just an idea because I, 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 I mean if there's if it's more than just us if you, well, yeah. I kind of have an answer to that I know um, I'm Nick said I met a rotary club sponsor so they work with the red rotary so they do have it but part of the lesson not so much, but that's, you know, more of a teacher curriculum. That's something that we can maybe create or, you know, offer and show and according to, like, the calendar, right, like the River Week coming up in September. And we can send an them. email, and so they can take okay, okay, advantage of that, put in the, like, the, the lesson based on the teacher. Yeah. And just go by the environment of science and teacher, we can ask her. There's an actual test. Sure, yeah, works. we were hoping to give, like, at piggybacking off of that idea, is give, like, if students attend the movie screening, we can give them community service hour credit for attending the movie screening. Um, and maybe not incentivizing it, but they get a little added bonus, you know, if they go and they, they're a part of it. In addition to the movie screening, they'd also like to do a uh, panel discussion. We'd like to tell the story of plastic in Laredo and um, go back and revisit the Tracy knows it well, the um, plastic reduction, instead of council member bed modest, um, the plastic bag reduction ordinance and what happened with that and the story of that. So Mr. Porter is going to be a part of that panel and then we're working um, together with Risk and, and Rotary with a couple, to bring a couple more people into that panel and discuss it. Um, we had initially thought we could invite Eva Guzman who was the um, concurring opinion on that Supreme Court decision, but she's running for office, and it's not exactly the best fit to have her come in and be a part of that panel. So um, literally, I suggested her name, and a few days later I read in the paper that she was running for office, and I was just like, oh. <laughs> so I'm sure, I'm, sh I'm sure she would say yes to the invitation, but um, we don't want it to be political. So we want it to be uh, an informational, educational presentation without any um, any optics coming in and, and sort of ruining or or suggesting something other than than the sort of just the intent of what we want to do with that. So I'm very excited about that project, and it's um, really great the way that we're you know sort of building the synergy between Risk and Laredo Rotary and um, Keep Laredo Beautiful. It's just really lucky to be. On the bandwagon and uh, helping, so. Well, and maybe you know, adding more onto that, you know, we do have an, an excellent individual that's here with us right now from Keep Texas Beautiful. <laughs> maybe uh, Mr. Arsip might be able to give us some insight of what's going on with the, through the state of Texas for that reduction, also in certain areas. 
that we can try to kind of incorporate down this way also. Yeah, we can do that. Mr. Rasa, you're officially invited. <laughs> so, and I can definitely give you more information about that, that panel discussion. It's just, I don't have a venue and an exact date yet. So, you know, kind of been keeping quiet about it, but I'm, I'm really excited about that because I think it's going to be very uh, beneficial overall yes. to the community. So, thank you, Madam Chair. I don't know if there's any other questions. What do you think the attendance would be like? What would be the anticipated attendance to, to that venue? I, we had discussed some goals, and I want to say for, I know for sure for the cleanup, we, we were, our goal was going to be about 400 volunteers okay. for the cleanup itself. Switching over to the uh, movie, I'm not exactly sure. We didn't really know what to expect with that one yet, and we wanted to see what the venue was going to be before setting like a hard number. But I know that they wanted somewhere close to that number too, 300 yeah. to 400 perhaps to attend. Because LC's already given out their their, uh, their directive on, on what they can expect for those who want to use their facilities. Okay. So okay. I, I know LTGI is already moving to, to do a few plays there and uh, Tammy is probably about a month behind in terms of uh, Putting out what, they, what their expectations are. Yeah, yeah Dr. Dr. Abrego hasn't stuff. given me any updates, so I really couldn't, yeah. you know, touch on it very specifically at this point. Yeah, the AM system just got, it's, it's the start of next week or something like that when everything's back to full 100% through the, through the entire system, system from the Board of Regents. So that's, and yeah, they're playing catch up, trying to figure out what they can fill and what they can't mm -hmm. fill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Panel draft test is always an option. I mean, they they love, they love those types of events as yes. well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Let me make a note of that and discuss I that. I think their but I think their biggest room is a hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we use that for uh, with the lines when we did the uh, the audio visual the the, the audio movie the visual movie whatever it was I can't remember what it was. Uh, we actually had the audio descriptive movie night there uh, for the blind youth here in Laredo, mm -hmm. and we could fit a hundred people. That's that's what you okay. can fit in those in the biggest theater there at Alamo. Okay. Yeah, and they were huge supporters of the Check All Back Reduction Ordinance. Yes, they were. From what I remember, from when I was here, I remember I, they reached out to me, like seeing how they can help. I don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. They still haven't opened up fully at Alamo. I don't know when they're deciding to open up, but if we can squeeze in there before they open up and maybe have two of the movie screens, you know, that's a possibility that, too. That could be something that could, yeah. that could be done. That way you have at least 200 mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. taking up all their space. Right. We can market it to be sort of this exclusive event, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. get in here and get, get to see this. You know, I mean, now Emmy Award winning or Emmy nominated, I can't say award winning yet, right? But yeah. Emmy nominated, you know, film. So, so yeah, we're excited to be a part of sort of the, just the, you know, all these organizations working to bring awareness to this, this very big issue. And at the most recent conference from Keep Texas Beautiful, we discussed at the last board meeting about Keep America Beautiful's litter um, survey that they did and released recently. Um, and plastic was a big, a big, I guess, item <laughs> on that litter survey. So um, it's a, it's a very big deal, and, and something that everyone can, I think, can empathize with and can understand. So, so yeah, Alamo Draft House. Let me mention that to um, Patricia and to Tricia. So and we'll do that. Very good. That's taking place um, Sunday, right? The 26th. The cleanup is the 26th. We don't have the screening date yet because okay. of the venue reservation that was going to be done this month at Tamayu. <laughs> so we are still pending on that. And that's where you would um, give the volunteer community service hours to we the would students? Give for everything. For everything. Anything that they may attend, we could give. Uh, volunteer service hours, both at the movie screen and for the cleanup. And would they log in? Well, I know it's way ahead, uh, but you know, how you usually do it? Through they register through mm -hmm. that app. Yes, exactly. So it's easier for yes, that would be the idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so 
some of your mm -hmm. Bonus points on a test. <laughs> there you go. Extra credit, incentives. <laughs> They're always looking for that. So. That's good. Yes, yes. 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 It's the final. The final. Yes, the final. Yes. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> okay. Um, so, do, do we want to go over um, just what we will discuss in the next agenda before we adjourn? Or we already know. Sure, Ma that would be helpful, Madam President, to make sure I did not um, miss anything. Okay. So, you want me to read out my notes? Yes, just okay. whatever you have yes. for next meeting. So, I have the amendment, uh, the one time amendment to the bylaws uh, for the term of service for members that were impacted by the COVID timeline. Uh, the amount of time, the specific amount of time lost due to COVID. So just tracking down that number of months. And then an item to remove the members that have not been responsive so far or in attendance to the meetings. And then an item to amend the bylaws to allow for virtual meetings and meeting attendance and getting the language from the city attorney's office so that we can take into account several conditions that may apply. Public health emergency and then those impacted by any particular contagious disease, just mm -hmm. to not name a disease, but just because mm -hmm. the next pandemic could be something else. Right? <laughs> right. We, we don't that. really know. Let's hope well, not. Exactly. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and those are the four items to bring back. And then um, in discussions with um, Mr. Abse, he would like to be uh, included on the next agenda as well as making a presentation. That, did I understand that correctly? Yeah, an update for okay. once I get settled into the new into position. The office. Yes. Very cool. So that would be the other item. And I don't know if the members have any other uh, points that you'd like to include. Um, I would like to offer some consideration for any subcommittees that we would like to create. Um, and then perhaps some strategic planning session consideration. Um, so, A, because again, logistically, we just started to work together as a group, but what does the group see as those primary points that staff and the organization itself need to be working towards um, and, and starting to define that? So those are the things that I would offer um, for the commission's uh, consideration. Um, perhaps we could have a discussion about budget and what we anticipate we're going to be spending over the next 12 months and okay. different events that have already been planned. I know council polls uh, keep running beautiful in 10,000 different directions and we support a lot of their efforts and so we'll just maybe have a really good strong calendar of what uh, is already planned by some of the council members. I know council member Martinez is going to want to have another tree planting but we are waiting for um, we are waiting for tree planting to begin again. And we know that that's a fall, you know, oh, event. Um, right now, we don't have those programmed, though. I can tell you that I have yet to get, you know, John usually gives us the directive, and we um, plan those out based on, obviously, from the director, and then that's communicated from city managers and city yes. council, as you said. But we don't have any, any tree plantings as of yet. We are going to be making a tree purchase, um, so I'm working on some quotes, mm -hmm. and then we have some trees already in the nursery waiting. Is there right. a donation waiting to be made? There is a donation waiting to be made yeah. at North Central Park as well that's yeah. also pending yeah. around a new a ADA d development. Mm -hmm. um, is, that, is that the one you're talking about? No, there's about? another. Uh, oh, there's Marcus another one. Oh, there's another one. Okay, so Avery, he wants to different is beautiful. Yeah is another tree donation that's coming in for North Central Park as well, specifically. Okay. okay. So I think it's about 30 trees or so. Uh, very yes. cool. So yeah, there's there's definitely things happening with tree plantings. We just don't have anything definitive on the calendar yet. Do you remember when we started docks planting in 2019? When we started? When we started kind of having the meetings and stuff. Was that August? Mm -hmm. Was that that far out? It was, we, I think we had about six months lead time to tell you the truth. So maybe earlier, maybe February. Well, it was November when we did it. Oh, wait, no. I think March sounds about right. I have my notes. I can go back and check. Because I'm trying to discourage them with having set it up for 2022 and not 2021. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But he's got a tree donation coming, and he's got this other one that's pending. We're already in about 60 trees. He's probably going to say, well, let's just do another 250, all the, like we did last year, or 2019, and get people out there. But we're still weighing the pandemic and other things yes. with that. Yeah, we, I asked the question today about whether we could proceed with our August events mm-hmm. and if there were concerns that we needed to know about. So we're it, right now I'm literally in limbo. Um, we had a planting day at the South Laredo Library this Saturday. It was only 20 um, volunteers and we're going to be outside. So I did say all of that. I said it's mm-hmm. a small group. We're going to be outside. Um, but I'm waiting to hear back a determination on that and then we had we wanted to do a back to school cleanup at slaughter um we're also waiting on that one too um to see what what management and the health authority um is suggesting at this point because our numbers just changed and they obviously took a a turn for a little bit more a little bit higher in terms of the statistics and all the different rates that are tracked um by the health authority so so yes, there's definitely um, still very much consideration towards the pandemic at this point before we move on with our, our current you know, events that we had planned. So we shall see, we shall see what, what the uh, statistics tell us that we need to be doing. The last day I heard you had a conversation with Mundo? Oh yes, yes, about the website. Yeah, he, he was just saying that he had been behind mm-hmm. and he said he was gonna get on it I want to say, I Thursday. can't remember exactly what day, He's out but tomorrow. It's yeah. got to be Thursday. He said he had um, a couple of other projects. One was having to do with utilities, and I don't remember what the other one was, and then he was going to come yeah. back to ours. He's doing the, uh, the life raffle. Okay. So we're getting ready to broadcast that on Tuesday okay. next week. Yes, so so he's, he says he's going to populate website here pretty soon. And the question for him was, are we missing any content? Is there anything that I need? Or Correct. That I need to right, yeah, I was asking what gaps I needed okay. to fill in. So he said he was going to get back to me. Okay. Cool. I don't have an answer on that yet. Nope. So. Okay, next, next week we can run yeah. it. For those of you that didn't hear that have the benefit, last time Council Member Ben Manis's, um Liquid Studio Group is providing in-kind support to Keep Florida Beautiful and developing a website just for Keep Florida Beautiful. So we've been um, in contact with his staff and us and developing things. Um, We have a podcast that will live and debut on our website. Lucy was on the last podcast, so Lucy's debut in the podcast world. (laughs) And um, so we're gonna be producing a podcast monthly We'll probably be recording the next one next week and we're going to pivot and do some features on our partners so i'd like to partner i love laredo um i'd like to partner with uh keep um laredo sustainable as well and um you know kind of just bring our partners into this these next few podcasts tammy you tammy has been an amazing partner to us i mean we have so many partners so <laughs> it's like gotta choose who who to bring in and who to be a part of it. So we're looking forward to our website. So exciting! Thank you, Jason. Yeah, <laughs> our staff had a lot of fun with it. So I um, really enjoyed working with Hitesh, who is our, our one of our coders, lives in India. So he's watching us develop this, and he's going. I've got to be able to talk to people in my in my community and do something similar. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very cool. Interesting to see what happens. If they, if they launch something like that, we're, we're definitely going to highlight that. Yeah, and yeah. Our website spurred on their mm-hmm. community to Very cool. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Neat. Yeah. Very neat. Yeah, so we've got a lot of little moving parts. <laughs> and tree plantings, clearly, that need to be put on the calendar. So, <laughs> so we've got a, a great fall to look forward to. Hopefully, let's see. Yeah. So, okay, so do you want us to put an item on, <laughs> going back to what the, the root of that discussion, an item regarding tree tree plantings or just calendar just events? Just kind of calendar events. Item. What's already out there and, okay. and where they need us. I mean, we want to be active participants mm-hmm. in some of these things as well. Definitely. Um, sure. And if I can see the calendar that far out, I, yes. can, I can start planning. Yes. To be there at some of these kids. Yes, okay. And bringing my volunteers. Yes, I agree. 
So budget calendar of events, um, Mr. Ibsen, KTB presentation. Any other items? You know how the city has that community calendar? Mm -hmm. Are these uh, tree plantings and events part of that, or it's not really? We haven't we haven't submitted them, but we can. We can get into the habit of doing that. To tell you the truth, that had been. It was kind of out of sight, out of mind, but that's a very good thought. I helped with that, that community calendar a while back, right? A long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, so that's I was wondering hard. that, yeah, if those, maybe that'll get more exposure and more volunteer I will make a note of that. And then we have our own calendar, like for the board, mm -hmm. where we can actually plan and to be there, sure. right? Yeah, the website's going to have a really interesting calendar. It's almost the same model that they use for parks. In the rec where you actually have the dates, but if you click on it, it pops everything out the flyer, map, everything you need to be nice. able to attend the event. Cool. And uh, a space for event bright link if you're going to need registration, all that will be in there. I love it. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> great. Yes. Yeah. I've, seen, I've seen so many, like, you know, cleanups online, and and I don't think, I don't I don't know if Keep Your Group was part of it or because I, I wasn't aware, but I would like to so that we can be there. You know, I just didn't know if it was part of Keep Your Beautiful or I just see them online, so I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah. We'll, we'll make it a point to, for you to know which ones, yes. you know, are branded and a part of this yes. organization. Because yeah, Big Moves or Isla Moreno's were very spontaneous at times. I mean, from one day to the next, he's cleaning up some place. Yes, um, yes. You know, my, my first involvement with him was just with Henry. Yeah. Henry called me one morning and said, hey, you're picking up trash this morning. Okay. Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we walked uh, McPherson. Yes. To pick up yes. Trash. Yeah. But very spontaneous. So. Yes, and, and trying to uh, trying to get him like scheduled. It's like, okay, are you in town this weekend? Are you not? And so, yeah, we work, we work really well with Big Lou, but it's like catching him at the right moment to get him to you know, partner with us, but we, we basically just kind of, it's, it's an unspoken rule. We part, our three main partners on anything is Laredo Sustainable, I Love Laredo, and Keep Laredo Beautiful. Those are the three sort of trifecta of everything that we're doing um, locally. Um, because Big Lou just has a really great following um, on social media, so that's like a huge help whenever we're trying to get you know, eyeballs, impressions, people looking at, at, our, at all of our events. Um, so, and then Laredo Sustainable has been branching out and doing different things. So she's also built sort of this, um, I say she, Valerie Gonzalez is her name. She's built this um, nice array of different folks looking at what she's doing too. So, and I think. And then there's Marilyn, I don't know her last name. Bautista. Yes. Yes. She's, yes. She's yeah. Marilyn has cool. been very supportive of our true. events too. I think the last cleanup she came to was our May the Fourth Be With You yeah. cleanup over at Sacate Creek and Seven Flags Park. She was there. So yeah, she's been really good too. A really great, great synergy on social media for sure. Yes. Yeah. It's so. hard with the baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You can contribute another way. <laughs> So, all right, so I think I have um, all the items for the next uh, meeting. Um, looks like we'll have a good, long agenda. Yes. Um, and is it, oh, it's after um, Labor Day, so it's Tuesday, September 7th. Correct. correct? Yes. Thank you. We also have to have Are you all off on September, on Labor Day? Yes. yes. I believe so. Okay. So that's okay. Yeah, that it's the, okay. It's okay. Tuesday the it's okay seven. with us. Yes, at four thirty. There. That's what we agreed on. That it, they're always at this time. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes, and I believe on. Um, if you want to double check, Madam Secretary, on your roster, I think I put September seventh already. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I was working on that earlier today. Mm -hmm. Okay. So may I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All the support signs. Meeting is adjourned. Sweet.